kiddos, in our last video, we talked about how to find the molar mass for an element. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to find the molar mass for a compound, um, or really for a formula unit. If we're talking about ionic compounds, it's all the same stuff. Um, and so remember that what we did for an element is that we looked up the individual value on the periodic table of that element, the atomic weight that was there, we said that was the, the mass of a whole mole of that thing, and so we took that as the molar mass. So for instance, we had aluminum in the last video, 26.98 grams equals one mole. For a single oxygen, it was 16.00 grams equals one mole. So what do we do if it's a compound? Because let's be honest, most of the time it is gonna be a compound. So here's what we do to find the molar mass part, and then we'll work some calculations with that molar mass, but anytime you've got a compound, you have to find the molar mass first. And it's not as simple as just looking on the periodic table for one thing, you're gonna to have to look most of the time for multiple things. So what I, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down into what it is. So I've got one sulfur, I have three oxygens, okay? And I'm gonna multiply that by the individual gram atomic masses of each of them from the periodic table. So if you look on the periodic table to find your individual gram atomic masses, we've got a 32.06 for sulfur, we have a 16.00 for oxygen, and then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply across. I've got one of these, I've got three of these, so I'm going to multiply those across and I'm going to get, obviously anything times one is itself, and then three times 16 is gonna give me 48, okay? And then you're gonna come down and add them up together. And so that's gonna give me, in this case, 80.06 grams of sulfur trioxide, SO3, and that is gonna be equal to one mole of SO3. Good news is this is kind of the easy part um, of the molar mass thing. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than just looking up and saying, hey, sulfur's this, let's do the math. Um, and the bigger the compound, obviously, the more stuff that you would have to do here. Um, also, a really quick word of caution is when you're doing oxygen, which you will, a lot of the compounds we deal with are oxygen, make sure that you don't confuse this for a 30 when you go to do that math. Um, in many cases, you might want to make yourself just an extra little multiplication sign there just to make sure that you know that it's not 30 times 16, that it's three oxygens, and I'm going to multiply them by 16 to get that. Okay, so that gives us what in what the technical sense we would say that that is the gram molecular mass. If it was an ionic compound, we would say that it was the gram formula mass. Again, all together with the gram atomic mass from the last video, we call all those things molar mass. That's really pretty much all that it's ever necessary to call them because it, it is exactly what it says. It is the mass of one mole of that thing. Okay, so let's work a couple of problems. Um, with compounds just to see how this all works. Okay, so problem number one, let's say that we had some dry ice, we had about 66 grams of it, um, and we were curious about how many moles of carbon dioxide, that's what CO2 is, are in that 66 grams of CO2. Well, again, we can't just pull the number straight off the table, we actually have to find our molar mass first before we can do that. And so we have one carbon, we look up carbon on the periodic table, okay, we have two oxygens. Oxygen, of course, is 16. Again, remember that it's probably useful to throw in an extra time sign there just so you don't confuse that to be 20. And so that's going to be 32.00 and 12.01. We're then going to add those up together. That's going to give us 44.01 grams of CO2 is equal to one mole of CO2. And so at this point, it works just like the problems that we worked before. Once you've found the molar mass and we're going from grams to moles, then everything works out exactly the same um, as it did in the last video. So I'm gonna write down my given and my unknown really quickly. So my given is 66.0 grams of CO2. I'm looking for how many moles? So I'm looking for moles of CO2. And then we can set up our conversions and do our math, just like we did in the previous video. The only difference here is that I had to calculate the molar mass first instead of just reading it off. So 66 grams of CO2, 
I need grams to cancel, right? And so I'm going to take my molar mass that I just calculated. That goes on the bottom so that it can cancel. The other half here is moles of CO2. Okay? And so we're then going to take that, 66 times 1 divided by 44. Again, remember that what you're doing here is multiply everything in the numerator, divide it by what's in the denominator, and what we're going to get in this case is 1.50 moles of CO2. Again, check your sig figs. Make sure that that answer makes pretty good sense. Yeah, it does because that is about 50% more than the original value was, so we're golden there. Just check and make sure it makes sense. Make sure that you have the same units and label it, especially as we're getting into molecules because, again, we'll start changing that stuff up a little bit. All right, let's work one more, um, and then we'll, we'll know what we need to know to be able to do molar mass calculations along with Avogadro's number stuff. Okay, so problem number two, determine how many molecules are in 0.0500 moles of hexane. This is the formula for hexane, C6H14. Um, and so we see the word molecules, and when you see molecules, that should sort of immediately be your hint that, hey, I need Avogadro's number. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Remember what we said in the previous videos, don't ever abbreviate molecules because it looks like moles and they don't mean the same thing at all. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you're getting the right information down. And then the second thing is, okay, so we're talking about molar mass. Um, we're doing a lot of the gram stuff. I've got the formula there. And so I need to go ahead and find my molar mass, right? So I'm gonna to start to write this down. I've got six carbons and I start to look that up. And then I've got 14 hydrogens hydrogens are 1.0 and so and then all of a sudden you stop and you think wait a minute hold on do I have grams anywhere in this problem does it ask for grams does it give me grams and the answer is no um, and one of the things that happens a lot for students is they're like well we just learned about this stuff um, and I know how to do this and this is pretty straightforward um, pretty simple I know how to calculate molar mass and I've got a formula Again, we've been working these, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calculate the molar mass. And here's the thing. I don't need the molar mass. In fact, like getting it is probably just going to throw me off a little bit because I'm not asked for grams. I'm not given grams. I mean, my given, my given is 0 0.0500 moles of hexane. And my unknown is molecules. There's no grams there. There's no grams there. There's no mass mentioned in the problem. So I don't need mass, okay? Um, and so that, that's what I might start deem to you all sort of a trick question. It's keep your eye on the ball. Make sure that you know what you're doing when you're problem solving. Don't just slavishly do everything. So I'm gonna write my given in here. Okay, hexane. And I'm going to use my equality that relates between them, okay? Moles to molecules, that's all I need. I'm going to cancel moles first. Okay, and we're going to do Avogadro's number on the top. Remember that in this case, the particles that we're talking about are molecules. Okay? And then we're going to math that one out. And once we math that out, we're going to get... Um, 3.011 times 10 to the, I believe, 22nd. Let me make sure that I look here. 22nd molecules. No molar mass needed. Now, let that be a lesson. Could you have found the molar mass? And again, let me cross this out. I don't need all that stuff, right? Could you have found the molar mass? Yeah, quite simply, okay? We would have multiplied that. Um, we would have got 72. 14 times 1 gives us 14. We add them up, we get 86 grams of hexane equals 1 mole of hexane. But I don't need it, okay? And so why find something that you don't need, especially if it's going to throw you off? And some of you are like, well, no, 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 I just, I just want to find it. And then here's the thing, don't, because if you did and you had another equality here, then you would try to find some way to wedge it into the problem, okay? Which it's not necessary, obviously, because moles cancel and I'm left with molecules. 
Okay, so again, just, just make sure that you know what you're doing, examine your problem, see what you're given, um, what you're given, what you're looking for, find the relationship between them and work from there. Don't do work you don't have to do. All right, kiddos, thanks.